Any questions? Anybody got any questions tonight? I'll take some questions tonight and um, I'll humbly see if I can answer them. And, and look, if I don't know, I'll just tell you that I don't know, okay? I'm not scared to tell you that I, I don't know. Um, but I love God and I love his word and and I've tried to be a, a student of his word for many, many years now. And um, y'all got y'all got to get your mics. Yeah, y'all better... Y'all better get mic'd up if y'all want to say something tonight. All right. Praise the Lord. Um, one of the questions, I'll, I'll just kick it off. One of the questions was about the end times. So we might touch a little bit on end times um, because the world is crazy right now. And so... Um, I'll tell you what I believe, what events need to take place before the end of the world comes. So I'll talk about a little bit about that maybe tonight. Um, and then there was another question about what I thought about the book of Enoch. Anybody ever heard of, of Enoch? So um, I've never read the book of Enoch, so that'll just tell you how much I think about it to start off with, but I'll tell you the reason why I believe in the Bible, that we have 66 books, 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament, because these books were accepted by the canon. The canon was a, it was a group of people that were put together that were scholars that knew Hebrew and Greek and some and some of the Old Testament is Aramaic and they were they were experts in these languages and what they did was was they went through all the writings the old the the writings that were on scrolls and if it didn't pass their test as inspired of God, they didn't accept it and it didn't make the canon, which didn't make the Bible that we have today, which is 66 books. So I trust the authority of the scholars that sanctioned the 66 books that we have in the Bible. And so there were many scrolls that were found um, from dating way back, even historical. Um, some were uh, inspirational. And these scholars went through them and they had to pass a litany test in order to make the Bible. And that's why I trust the Bible. Now, the book of Enoch. Are y'all alive? And look, I'm open for questions, okay? So uh, here I am, hit me. Um The book of Enoch didn't make the cut. It wasn't accepted as inspired of God. Inspired means the spontaneity of God. The spontaneity of God is, is that these, it actually means God breath, meaning that even as holy men, the Bible says, holy men of old penned the, the, the word of God as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Meaning that God's inspiration, God's breath is on this word that is accepted by the canon. And the, uh, and the book of Enoch was not accepted. So even though there may be some historical truths and there may be some truths like the lost books of the Bible, um, Josephus, those kind. He, he's a historian. But they did not make the cut to become what we call inspired of God. Now, 1 Timothy 3.16 says that all scripture, all the word of God, the 66 books is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable uh, unto 
doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction unto righteousness that the man of God or woman of God may be thoroughly furnished and not lacking in any good work. Um, so, so you got to stick with God's inspired word. You got to have God's voice, God's heart in your life. If you're going to change, if it's going to transform your life, it's got to be the word of God. If you don't get the word of God in you, nothing happens. Come on now. So I don't know what happens when you read the book of Enoch. Okay. Um, but a lot of times these these books, the devil can actually use them to create confusion and dissension and division and arguments and disputes. And, and um, John, uh, Pastor John says a rabbit hole. So don't go in the rabbit hole. Um, so I, I, and, and, I'm, yeah. I'm, and I hit it. I jumped them. Y'all run them. Now. Also, um, cool. Sorry. Also, the um, I believe how they chose the books of the Old Testament. Jesus either referenced to or quoted from each book that was chosen in the Old Testament. How about that? That's exactly right. Jesus referenced um, many, many different books. He, I, Jesus referenced um, um, Noah and the flood. Right. Je Jesus. Uh, he, he, he referenced a lot of stuff. Please, come on. I, I, and this is a open. This is open. So, yeah, it's, it should be on. Yep. Yeah. You know, I at one time w was questioning that. Some man decided what goes in the Bible. What, but, man, we got to understand God is almighty. He is sovereign. Whether we have free will or not, I promise you, God got in the Bible what he wanted to get in the Bible for us. So we would know the truth, and the truth would set us free. That's not saying that other books aren't historical, and then, but the Bible itself, the 66 books, God ordained to put together. He, I believe he moved and inspired the canon people to put it together the way it is. We don't have to doubt that. We don't have to doubt God in that kind of thing. God gave us what we needed. Okay? Yep. Anyway. Yep, come on. Come on, on Miss Bernard. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, you know, if the word was inspired. Oh. Yep, yep. We got to turn this one on too. So I tricked you. There's two buttons. <laughs> we, we put two on yours, okay? Praise God. Somebody you. better shout in this place. <laughs> Anna. <laughs> Caleb, love you guys. Yeah, they are beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. Praise God. The, the word is given by inspiration of God. And then we read in Revelation, it says, if you don't, if anyone adds any word to this word, to the Bible, then his name will be taken out of the book of life. Mm. Therefore, as was said, if God put it there, he knows exactly what he wanted in there. It's enough for our salvation, enough for us to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. The book is his story. And when we come to know that, then there's nothing to add to that. But again, it's, it's written in Revelation. And yes. Add, don't add anything to it or take anything away for it. Whoever does this, his name will be taken out of the book of life. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. All right. What you got? Uh, you know, just thinking about the Bible uh, being inspired by God uh, how many books are life changing like like God's word I mean just total people are transformed just by the word so that's you know it just it's just proof that it's God's word because it, it's it's one of the probably the only book that actually changes people's lives yeah well and I mean if you look in the Old Testament let's just jump into the Old Testament let me show you a few things so that you'll You'll see what I see, because when I when I first started seeking truth, when I was a seeker, I studied different denominations. I studied different religions. I told y'all last week if if uh, Ismail would have been the the promised child, I would be a Muslim today, because that would have been the promise. But Isaac was the promised child, and Jesus came from Isaac. But the scripture clearly teaches 
Jesus Christ in his authority and the will and purpose of God for which Jesus Christ came to earth. Um, we'll start real quick. Isaiah, jump in. Let's jump in there. Isaiah uh, chapter 7. Let's, um, 7 verse 14. We'll start there. And then we'll go to Isaiah 9, 6. Is this thing acting crazy tonight? I don't know. Um, if, if so, I'll grab a mic. Um, but so here we are, 7, 7, 14. This is 700 years before Jesus Christ was born into the world. Wait a minute. No man can give you a video movie of exactly where Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. Exactly how he would be born from a virgin. Wait a minute. It's one thing to say, look, this, this great guy's going to be born into the world at a certain place. But then when you say, hey, and what she's going to be, what she's going to be impregnated by is by the Holy Ghost. 700 years before he shows up. This is what I'm talking about, inspired of God. This is the kind of stuff, I'm, I'm not saying that there's not other historical writings and stuff out there that have some truth, but not, not inspired of God that will change your life. Listen, only God can tell you 700 years what's going to happen, how it's going to happen where it's going to happen, who it's going to happen to, and what they're going to do it for to save you. Shout somebody. Listen what the scripture says. Therefore, you, when you see it therefore, you got to see what it's there for. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? He's God. Emmanuel, God is with us. How was Jesus Christ actually born into the world? When, why? Why did Jesus have to be born of a virgin? Why couldn't he have had the seed line of Adam? What would have happened? Because he was a lamb of God that takes away the sin of all the world. A, a, a lamb without spot or without blemish. He, was, he never had sin in his life. He wasn't born into sin like we are. If he would have came from the line of Adam, from the seed of Adam, he would have had a sin nature just like every kid that's three years old. When you tell him, don't touch that ink pen. If you don't believe it, bring the little girl here. No. Oh, here, here you go. Don't touch this pen. I'm telling you. I heard somebody that told their son, they said, now look, son, the stove is hot now. Don't touch that stove. And he was over here and about the next thing he knew is he, the, the little boy stuck his hand on the, on the, the red hot um, grill and his hand stuck to it. Man, he was hollering and screaming. And, uh, but that was the last time that he ever touched another hot stove. <laughs> Look, 9-6, nine, nine, look at this. 9-6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's Jesus Christ. 700 years. Watch this. Isaiah 53. Listen to this. You want to watch a movie of Jesus coming to be crucified and die? And it's 700 years before it happens? And you watch exactly how to listen to the scripture. It says, verse 3, 
He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows. He's acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs. He's carried our sorrows. Yet we did not, we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. But we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. We're doing our own thing. And the Lord has laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He's brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb. He opened not his mouth. You remember? He was taken from prison and from judgment, you remember? And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. He was killed for us. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. That was our sin that was upon him. You know who killed Jesus? Not the Romans. You did. You killed him. And he made his grave with the wicked. Was there thieves beside him? And with the rich in his death, was he buried in a rich tomb? Remember Joseph? Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Was he a righteous lamb? Yet it pleased God to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou make his soul an offering for your sin, he shall see his seed. Come on, that's you. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul. Jesus, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the Lord shall be satisfied. God the Father will see the terrible death that Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of us and he will say it is enough. I am satisfied. My judgment for sin is satisfied. Exactly what the Bible says. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great and he will divide the spoil with the strong because he has poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Psalms 22, real quick. I'm just throwing these out. I'm talking about inspiration tonight. I'm talking about why Ricky Sinclair believes in the Bible. Not to mention I was a drug smuggler and a crazy, crazy white boy. And I read this book, man, and all of a sudden I quit beating my wife. I quit swimming bales of marijuana across the Rio Grande River at night. I quit cussing. I quit fussing some. I'm getting better. My heart changed. That. That's why I, I don't know what we're doing with this. This is, um, I, I usually don't have this kind of problem and I wear this mic many times in the week because I do radio, I do all kinds of stuff. Um, I sit at this table and, and speak to the world. Um, Psalms 22, real quick. Watch this. Verse one, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I don't know how many years this is before Jesus actually was crucified. Why are you so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring, my, my moaning, my crying. My, oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you don't hear me. And here's what he says. I'm going to look down just real quick. Um. Verse 17. 
I may tell all my bones. They look and they stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. What did they do with Jesus' clothes? Here it is in the Old Testament. So I, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm sorry. I might have to take this one for a second. Praise the Lord. But when you read this in the Old Testament and then you see it come to pass in the New Testament and then it changes your heart. Nothing else in the world could change me. Nothing. I tried everything in the world, and the world let me down. And then I turned in my pain to God. And I thank God for the pain of life because it took a whole lot of pain for this hard head. Some folks need a little pain in their life to get the revelation. Because if you won't listen, then the Lord has a way like, son, don't put your hand on that stove. I got it, Dad. I'll never put my hand on that stove ever again. So some folks is a little hard-headed like me. And God has to use circumstances and pain and things in life to actually reach you. Are y'all out there? All right, is mom still all right? All right, mom, you still alive in here. All right. That's Samantha's mom, and she's visiting us tonight, and I'm so glad to have you. Praise the Lord. So let's talk just a little bit about the inspired Word of God, how it changed your life. Um, Brandon, I know you said something. We were talking about once saved, always saved. And y'all asked me, do I believe in once saved, always saved? And I told you that, yes, I believe in once saved, always saved, because I ain't never turning my back on the Lord, but I don't know where your heart is. So I'm just telling you right now, once saved, always saved for me, because I ain't turning back. But... But I don't know. I don't know if you can lose your salvation or not, but I ain't going to test it and see it. how close I can get to the edge. Come on now without falling over. But you pulled me on the side after that service last week and you told me an experience that you had with God. And I wonder if you would take the liberty to humble yourself and be honest because I like honesty because nobody can change unless we be honest about our lives. This ain't a place to judgment. We ain't judging nobody. We ain't putting on no mask in here. It, you, you is who you are. You, it is what it is. All right. So, so I believe God turns pain into power. I believe your identity comes from what you've walked through in your life. And you should never be ashamed of where you come from. Um, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll actually do my best to share and try to get through it. Cause, uh, so yes, uh, so yeah, I gave my life to the Lord many years ago and then, um, I, uh, I actually turned my back on him and just walked away from him and, um, <clears throat> lived were that. you really saved though? I mean, were I, you really was, living for God? I was, yes, sir. Sold out. I actually had people thought I had a pastor's heart. Te I mean, yes, absolutely. And you and I went the other way. You went, went after the, the world. I went after the world and, and chased it. And for, for several years, six, seven, eight years, I uh, I was just living in habitual sin. And God, I knew God was wanting me. He was drawing me, telling me to go to church and come to him. And I was saying no, no, no. Why did you tell was, him? Why did you tell him you didn't want to go to church? Because I knew he would want me to change and, and cut those things out of my life. And I wasn't. I wasn't you didn't want to hear his voice. I didn't. You knew that he was going to speak to you and you didn't want to go nowhere where he could possibly speak to you because you were too busy doing your own thing. Yes, sir. Anybody alive in here? Yeah. 
Jeannie went through an experience like that, and she said it was really hard for her to get back up again. Yes. I, and and what, what really grabbed my attention. Uh, is so let me ask you the million-dollar question. <laughs> All of y'all, raise your hands. You've, you've gone away from God. I mean, all of us have really, but I'm talking about like you habitually went after the world. You told the Lord, I'm going to, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to hear your voice. I'm going this way. I'm doing my own thing. All right. All right. And thank you for being honest. Let me ask you a question. If you would have died in your disobedience against God, what if you went to heaven or hell? Um, those that think you'd have still gone to heaven, raise your hand. Okay? Those that think you would have went to hell, raise your hand. All right, the hell wins. So, All right. <laughs> so you guys think that you can be saved in some kind of way become um, an apostate because that's one of your where I learned that from you last week and choose by your free will to go against God not to want God a demon demons has forsaken me love have been loved the things of the world I remember that scripture what do you think I mean I know God has mercy but uh, I believe uh... I believe I don't went to hell, I do. And uh, thank goodness for his mercy, and he drew me back. His drawing back was tough. It was painful. I, uh, his, draw, my, his drawback was me losing my father. Love you, brother. So. Lot, I love you, love you. All right, let me ask another question. Um, did the Holy Ghost ever quit convicting you and drawing you? If the Holy Ghost was still working on you when you was in your mess, raise your hand. Look at that. Derek, not you, brother. You're our great pianist, brother. Jesus. So, guys, let me tell you. I really don't know in my heart if you can lose your salvation. But there's one thing I do know is I believe with all my heart the Holy Ghost, even with y'all voting for Holy Ghost, he will never quit working on your heart. He'll never quit hounding. Now listen, I called Jesus the hound of heaven, man. Ooh, ooh. Man, he is on your trail. Shout somebody. <laughs> he, he done left the 99 that are acting right right now, and he's chasing you. Shout somebody. So I don't think that God will ever give up on you. I think that you still have a will because you're not a robot. And by the way, God could not have people that could love and that could worship him out of their heart unless he gave them free will. So therefore, God had to take a chance because he could have programmed all of us to be robots and we all would have mechanically worshipped him and praised him when we were, we were programmed to do that. But God never, there would be no value in that. Are y'all, no value. In order for you to have value with God, and, and I'm ready, sister, you have to have a free will, and God has to take a chance. There has to be a risk, knowing that some will choose by their free will to do their own thing.
And I love what the scripture says that no man can come unto the Father unless he first be drawn. And then the Holy Spirit teaches you all things whatsoever Jesus, the Word of God, has said unto you. Come on. I, I love an old song and I sing it all the time. Hey, look. Let me. That I am a living testimony. I could have been dead and gone. But God let me live on. Amen. Now, I spoke earlier about Revelation when it says your name can be taken out of the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm thankful to understand now that my name was in the Lamb's Thank Book you. of Life, even before I knew it was in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because as a child, growing up in Sunday school and church, I'd given my life to Jesus Christ. And we learned the scriptures and the old and the and the laws and the commandments, and we were living by the commandments and not understanding the importance of the Holy Spirit. We had heard of the Holy Ghost, but we really had not experienced the Holy Ghost, amen. We only knew of Jesus, did not really know him personally, and had not had that born again experience, but had given my life to Christ, confessed him as Lord as a child. Coming into the world, I remember at 21, I knew we could not have a drink or smoke anything. We were 21 years old. You had to be legally 21 years old in order to have a drink. And I had my first drink at 21. Had my own birthday. You didn't sneak nothing oh, as a teenager? No. I didn't. Oh, my God. We were taught to 20, 21, 21 years. How many of y'all snuck something? Look, oh, my God, look at this. Caleb, no way. <laughs> Jesus. Man. Anna, you better help him out a little bit. <laughs> I love you guys so much. That's right. The truth. So you were honest enough to wait till you were 21. Miss Verna. Yes, I celebrated my own birthday. You celebrated your own birthday with a drink. Lord, now I can drink. I'm 21. I can't wait. Uh, give me bourbon. <laughs> Could y'all see Miss Verna? Jack of Miser. Uh, give me something. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> this is serious to me. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Come on, tell us. Well, just about it. Tell oh, us. Yeah, thank God he spared my life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But again, talking about the importance of learning the word of God and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I didn't know of, I didn't know of the Holy Spirit. We sang in the Methodist church. We yeah. prayed about yeah. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But we never really experienced the Holy Ghost. But because I had been saved as a child, and I know that my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And then when I was saved, the scripture is written that we are saved with an holy, high calling. It's not by our efforts, but by his grace and for his purpose, which was given in Christ Jesus before the world began. Before I had that first drink, before I moved into the world. In heaven, it was given for me to be saved even before. It was given in Christ Jesus. He came to save me. Come on. He came to rescue me. Yeah. And I was drawn by his spirit. Yes. But not until I surrendered and accepted him as Lord with understanding. He was, he was with me all the time. Because so when I look back and see the places I took him, he was with me and, I, and he shouldn't have been there. Yeah. But he never left me. Amen. That's why I'm a living testimony. I know that he was with me there. I look back and scout. He's always there to help me, to strengthen me, to bring me through some things that could have destroyed me, could have destroyed my mind, even just this, the relationships, the kinds of things people did to me, or the, the experiences I had in family. But he was always there to strengthen and keep me. Now I, but now I know who it was. I don't know how he did it, but now I know who. But it was because I was being drawn all the time by his spirit to the cross. I, if, if it had not been for the Holy Spirit's drawing me, 
I never would have made it. Amen. But he never gave up on me because I was predestined because my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your name goes into the Lamb's Book of Life and nothing shall be able to separate you from the love of God. And he does not give up on us, amen? Yes. He just began a good work in me. He's gonna complete it until the day of Jesus yes. Christ. None can pluck me out of his hand. None can say whither goest thou and what doest thou because he's on my side to help me. And he is El Roy he sees me, he watches over me, knows there's a strand of hair in my head, and he's not gonna let me go and he's not gonna let enemy destroy me. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. That is so wonderful. Praise the Lord. Um, so, come on. Yeah, so, you know, we make <clears throat> salvation, heaven and hell. But really, eternal life is in our salvation. But really, salvation is relationship first, you know. And Jesus came and he died so, for so much more than just to get our names written in the book. And to get us into his kingdom, you know, actually died to get the kingdom back into us uh, through relationship with him first. And so when we, it's just something God has done in me when we make salvation relationship with him first above everything else, then heaven is, is just there. Um, best way I can explain it is like <sighs> ragu, right? Ragu. ragu okay so when you go when you go to the store and you want to buy ragu you know you're buying the tomato sauce you know you're getting the onions you know you're getting the bell peppers you know you're getting everything with it and when you get born again you know you already know that you you know it's the same it's just when you go buy the ragu you're not just buying it just so you can get the tomato sauce and throw everything else away you want it because everything's in it and when you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ um, the onions is there. So heaven is just there. When you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, the gifts are just there. You know, the, the, the you know, tomato sauce is there. And when you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, it's just it's all there. Just like buying a can of ragu. You don't have to go and buy all those ingredients separate. They're all in one can. And so for me, salvation is, a, is the same. You know, I wanted to share that real quick. Uh, you know, about um, what we talked to at the beginning. Um, before I had gotten born again, I was watching the Discovery Channel, and they were talking about the book of Isaiah was found, you know, and, and these, these scientists went through it, and it was authentic to the datings and all this stuff. And then right after that, um, the pastor, the pastor who I got born again at his church, I had met him, and he was just witnessing to me, and uh, he says, man, he already knew, I was, you know, I was atheist, and he knew I was an atheist. He says, you know what? He says, I had a friend of mine who was an atheist that I rode the, rode the work with. And he says, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22, he says, God sits upon his throne above the circle of, above the, circle of the earth and looks down on his inhabitants. And he says, when I told him that, he told me that, oh, the earth was shaped like a plate. But, and then that was the end of our conversation. And, like, and, and it was so weird that he would say, Isaiah... And I just got through watching a documentary or whatever it was on Isaiah and how it was authentic. And it was crazy that I was, I was atheist, right? But whenever he spoke that and he walked away from it, I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, and this is me being atheist, I heard Holy Spirit say, because it went through my mind, how did Isaiah, Liberty Isaiah, or way over there in Israel, know way back then, way before Columbus sailed the world, all this went through my mind in seconds, way before Columbus sailed the world and, and discovered it was round, how did Isaiah know it was round, shaped like a circle? And Holy Spirit spoke to me, said, because I showed him. That's exactly, so. That's, it. That's exactly right. And then I found out later on is actually the scripture Christopher Columbus used to present to the king that would give him the authority and everything that he needed to sell. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right, let's, um, let's look at two judgments because I got asked another question. There's a lot of questions I'm just now thinking of that I got asked. Um, there's two judgments. Judgment seat of Christ, which is, is a reward for Christians. I want to take a look at that. Um, but there's also a judgment 
called the great white throne judgment where those are sinners. And when you go, if you go before that judgment, you go to hell. So y'all want to take a look at that real quick? Because somebody asked, um, if you're not saved by works, why do you have, what, what's the big deal about works? But there are crowns and there are rewards for your works. Now, once you get saved, your works still count. They just don't earn salvation. Only the blood of Jesus could earn salvation for you. Praise the Lord. But there's different levels in heaven, shout somebody. There's different ta uh, torture chambers in hell. So um, y'all want to take a look at it? Um, let's, let's, go, let's, let's go to hell first. Um, Revelation chapter 20. I said that on purpose. I'm, 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 I'm getting y'all. All right. So um, let's see where we're going to start. Let's start. Let's start with verse 11. And I saw a great white what? Throne. Throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Now, this is a sad day. The, these are people that their names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. And as a result, they're not saved. They've never been born again. They've not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Verse 12, and I saw the dead. That, that's a key word there. Small and great stand before God and the books were open. Now, is there more than the Lamb's book of life there? So let me just tell you something. These are books, and, I, and I'm going to tell you something. One time I died, and I was dead. I got hit real hard on the football field one night, and my spirit left my body. And I stood in front of the judgment of, of, of God, and I watched my life like a video. The books were open. And I saw every bad thing that I've ever done in my life and there was no blood to save me. And it never did change my life because I, I didn't know what I saw. I never got it until later. And, um, but what I did realize is, is I realized that my life and your life is being videoed. You're being recorded. And there was one thing I remembered when I stood before God that there was no way I could tell God that, that, that I deserved heaven. That I deserved to be with him in his presence. Because my life spoke for itself. And when I re read this scripture, it says, And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. There was no way I could argue with God. It wasn't even no such, I just know, yeah, I was guilty. That is just like when you get busted and they video you. And you, you hand them the dope and they hand you the money. And you're standing in front of the judge in court and you're watching it openly. That's exactly what it's like. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it and and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire and this is the second death so the second death is when you're separated from god for eternity it's, it's not just the physical death. You've died physically. That's the first death. But now you stand in front of God and then you're casted from his presence because of sin that's in your life that wasn't paid for and now you have to pay for it. And that's why Jesus came. That's why he was born of a virgin. The reason why he's born of a virgin because Jesus was sinless. And therefore the father could, was satisfed with his righteous um, sacrifice 
and it appeased and satisfied God's righteous judgment forever. So that when you stand in front of God as making Jesus Lord and Savior life, now he has taken your sin, your transgression, and now he's given you his holiness, and now you can live forever with Jesus. Shout somebody. You got to be born again. You got to be saved. And that's why the inspired book, the Bible, teaches Jesus Christ. There really ain't nothing else to talk about. And thank God for some history and a few truths here and there. But look, brother, I'm talking about eternity. Shout somebody. Now let's quickly look. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. This is the judgment seat of Christ. And this is for Christians. Somebody said, well, I'm, I'm for by grace through faith. Are you saying that not of yourselves? It's a free gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So then why worry about works? Well, here's what the Bible says. Verse 11 again, 3.11. 1 Corinthians 3.11, For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, namely Jesus Christ. Shout somebody. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be manifested, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. How many know that the fire is going to test everything you do in your life? And the fire shall try every man's work for what sort it is. You either got wood, hay, or stubble. You got uh, precious stones, silver, and gold. Shall somebody. The foundation of Jesus, if you're building on Christ, and it's all about Jesus. By the way, the intents of your heart will be will be judged at this time. In other words, when you stand at the judgment seat of Christ before Jesus... And your works come before God, the motives of your heart and the reason why you did what you did will be revealed. And if you did it out of the heart for God and a love for God and a care for God's precious people, it'll be, it'll be gold, it'll be silver, it'll be precious stones. But if you did it for yourself, you live for yourself, it'll be wood, hay, and stubble. That's what you'll build on Christ. And if any man's works abide which he has built thereupon, building on the foundation of Christ, he shall receive a reward. And if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. He won't get a crown. He's not going to get a reward. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Shout somebody. Your works do count today. Because you will get a reward. So when I'm born again and saved, I will go before a judgment, but not the great white throne judgment, because that's for the dead. You are alive tonight. Shout somebody. You are born again. You are saved by the power of Jesus Christ and his kingdom. And I decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus, according to his kingdom, according to the authority of the living God, that in the name of Jesus, you are saved. You are healed. You are delivered. You are saved set free. The power of God is upon your life. Hey, have a great, great night tonight. We love you and we bless you. We'll see you Sunday, 10 o'clock, Bible school.